Another point I'd like to quickly raise, because it's the, speaking about the month of Ramadan. We have another issue, and that is the issue of the speed. Let's leave speed for when we drive motor vehicles, and then too, I'm coming from Singapore, you know, there's a very big difference between Malaysia and Singapore when it comes to, I think, generally breathing outside as well. Allah Allah. So if you go to Singapore, it's like you read the riot act, you know, to tell you, you breathe, you're going to be jailed. If you exhale, you're going to be jailed. Uh, you eat, you're going to be jailed. You chew gum, you're going to be jailed. You throw anything out there, you're going to be jailed. You walk, you're going to be jailed. You talk, you're going to be jailed. Okay. Today I joked with one of the brothers and I said, they should just put a big fence around the whole of Singapore. Say, guys, don't worry, you're in jail. <laughs> Because it's a feeling you get, you're just looking everywhere. I wonder who's supposed to tell on me if I'm eating chewing gum, for example. Who is it? This guy, that guy. This <laughs> one. Subhanallah. So, what happens is with speeding, we're worried about speeding when it comes to motor vehicles. We slow down because we know there's a trap here in South Africa. Mashallah, they have a very advanced system as well. You click, and in two days' time, you have, mashallah. Everything arriving at your home with amount, and you have a little negative of the image of what's happening. You cannot deny anything, and it's done. So we are so conscious about how we drive because we fear paying a thousand, two thousand ringgits. So we will not speed because we worried about the policeman. But Tarawi, we speed at five hundred kilometers an hour. <laughs> Believe me, I've seen people who just come down, come back up, come. We should have speeding traps. I promise you. Say you go down into the court before a minute crosses, you, you're going to have to pay. And if you come back up before you've actually settled down in Rukur, you're going to pay. And if you get to, if you complete your Taraweeh before so many minutes are up, you're going to pay. That's not the case in reality, but in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if you complete your Salah in a flash like this, you will not achieve what you're meant to be achieving by it, and you will not have helped yourself and you may have earned the sin by disrespecting your maker, by making it seem that you're doing him a favor. Wallahi. Those who rush in salah, what do they think they want? Do you think Allah wants that salah? For what? Take your time, relax. Allahu Akbar. Do you know what you've said? Allah has heard the one who has praised him. We say, Oh, our Rabb, we are praising you. So Allah hears the ones who praise Him, and immediately we say, oh Allah, we are praising You. Sometimes we don't even know what it means. We just say, Sami Allah. Allah. <laughs> Wallahi, I, I'm honest with you, a lot of us are guilty, and sometimes even those who try to be conscious, once in a while, when you're in a rush, why do you think the Prophet says that, you know, there is a hadith, and obviously this hadith, there are a few narrations of it. One of them is a sweet narration, which they say is not extremely authentic. But the other one is a little bit more authentic than that. One says, إِذَا حَضَرَ الْعَشَاءُ وَالْعِشَاءَ فَقَدِّمُ الْعَشَاءَ I'm sure you might have heard that. If, if Isha Salah is ready and Asha, which means dinner is also ready, then you have your dinner first and then you read your Salah. Now that is not a correct narration of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. There is a more correct narration where he speaks about uh, salah, salat al maghrib and food are coming together and similar meaning where you would have you would eat together you would eat quickly and then read your salah the meaning of it is correct because what we need to understand if there is a beautiful dish out there prepared for us with an aroma and we are hungry you will be insulting your maker when you're eating you give food preference over Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala. You're saying Allahu Akbar and you're saying I need to. If the Imam is delaying, you're going to think to yourself, hey man, my pie is getting cold there. <laughs> and you know, you're just so. It's an anti climax. You're actually in there and you really don't want to be there. It's like when you serve tea sometimes, I don't know, but sometimes the, when the tea gets very cold, it doesn't taste nice. Well, that's according to me. Some people have cold tea. And nowadays you have iced tea for your information. So that's another topic going on. But if the tea, imagine if it's poured already, and then someone says, hang on, let's read Salah. And you're a person who loves hot tea. A cup of tea will be given preference over Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because you're going to be reading Salah in such that you're going to say, subhanahu wa ta'ala, less because you've got tea waiting for you. 
So rather, hang on a second, have your tea, perhaps you might burn yourself a bit, but you can then make dua, Allah grant me, you know, ease in my mouth, I've already got a blister here, because of my rush for the tea. That's better than having compromised your salah, better to have had that blister. And we're not saying take your time. Some people say, no, you know, salah, we'll, we'll read it later, so let's have a meal. And now you're enjoying a luscious meal, one, two hours later, you say, right, let's get up for salah. No. You have a little bit, which means, you know, whatever your, your desires were very clung to at that particular time. And then, mashallah, you engage in your salah, you fulfill your salah. So, why I say this is the point of speed, especially when it comes to taraweeh. I know one uncle, he, his memory wasn't strong. So when he used to leave the salah, he used to leave as imam. He didn't used to know how many rak'at, how many rak'at am I reading? So he used to keep 10 coins in his pocket. After every two rakah, he put one coin on the side. And there they read 20 rakah, 20 rakah. So what happens? After that he puts another coin. And then he knows that he, people would look at the coins, how many coins are there? They always eight. <laughs> eight coins, that means there's just four rakah left. Wow, you know, it's like going downhill. And do you notice, uh, I don't know if you notice, I notice it. When you're reading Taraweeh and the Quran is being recited, sometimes the last rakat seem longer than the first. It's the first ones you're still energetic and you're standing. Before you know it, you're already down in Rukua. And sometimes what happens, as you get to the last later rakat of the evening, it seems like it's stretching and it's going longer because now you're getting tired and you know you're getting... So what I do, we play a psychological game with the musallis. The first few must be long. And after that down here, nobody feels it. Because after that, you cut it short. And I even tell some of the Imams to do the same thing. Try it out. Let your first few rakaat be quite long. Because people are still energetic, psychologically. Another point is, when you read melodiously, without raising your voice, without getting tired yourself, the people behind you do not get as tired. You need to know that. And then when you have a sound system like this one, I think this is fit to be in a huge masjid. Beautiful sound system, you feel like sitting, listening, you know. Right now I'm talking, I feel like talking to you. Because I, I'm not straining myself, and at the same time, I'm sure you can hear every word, because it's very clear, mashallah, jazakallah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant acceptance to all of us.